currently he hasn't been involved in programs that they want to control virtually everything. And they want to be intimately involved in our health care. And please let us not believe the feeble pronouncements that this is going to be between the doctor and the patient. The doctor is going to be compelled as we progress here through Obamacare. We see this happening in socialized medicine elsewhere. The doctor is going to be compelled to start marching in lockstep with the collective consensus of what should and shouldn't be done in terms of treatment. And then there will be breaches of uh, doctor-patient confidentiality in the name of protecting privacy. The only people that won't be able to find out anything about you will be your wife. Everybody else in the world will. Uh, We already see that under what is called HIPAA, the Health uh, Information Privacy Something Act. Uh, It should be called HIPAAocracy because that's basically what it is. It does exactly the opposite of what it claims to do. And now we discover the government wants to be involved in our mental health and to require mandatory mental health screenings for people in different age groups. And you can see where this one's going. So tell me, Senator Sanders, exactly where is the government not involved, and why do you suddenly flip on that one issue? Alex Newman is president of Liberty Sentinel Media, which is an information consulting firm. He's a correspondent for The New American and co-authored with Dr. Sam Blumenfeld, uh, Crimes of the Educators, How Utopians Are Using Government Schools to Destroy America's Children. That came out uh, last year. And uh, Alex, I know Dr. Blumenfeld is no longer with us, but boy, he was an advocate for solid American education and against all of the progressive nonsense of the last 50 years. I remember he was a, a well-established name when we started doing this show 25 years ago. Yeah, he was a great guy. And, you know, he his mission in life was to save as many children as possible from illiteracy. And, you know, he did a great job, but there's still a lot more that needs to be done. So... Mental illness, what, what, is, what are the proposals here? And then, you know, whenever a government person says we need to do X, Y, Z, I always say, well, what does that mean? How is it going to be enforced or implemented? Is it mandatory or voluntary? And who's going to pay for it? Those are the four questions. So let's look at those. Well, what happened here is this uh, panel advising the Obama administration's Department of Health and Human Services came up with two separate recommendations. One calls for mental health screenings of all adults. And and by all, they mean all. They say even regardless of risk factors, it doesn't matter if you have no risk factors associated with mental illness that you still need to be screened. Uh, The other proposal, which was separate called for screening children from ages 12 to, you know, up to 18. And they left the door open there to start screening children even younger than that. And they recommended the use of some very powerful medications to treat children younger than, uh, than 12 for some of these alleged mental illnesses. So basically what they want to do is mandate that uh, your primary care physician, you know, your, your regular doctor, your family doctor, when you walk in there, ask you questions, give you forms to try to determine whether you have some sort of mental illness, primarily depression right now, but eventually they want to expand that. And um, you know, the, the way they're going to pay for it, now that they've kind of commandeered the, the health insurance industry with Obamacare, you know, all the health insurance plans have to comply with the uh, Obamacare dictates or they become illegal. Uh, I experienced that firsthand because the, the health plan that I had, which is wonderful, Uh, actually became illegal under Obamacare because it didn't offer all the different so-called services that Obama thinks we need, you know, mental health services, contraception, these kinds of things. So I was upset by that. But now that they've commandeered the uh, the health insurance industry, they feel confident that they can just order whatever they feel like ordering, in this case, tests for alleged mental illness. So, you know, this is a a very slippery slope, first of all, you know, they're talking, they're couching it in terms of, oh, we need to, you know, look for depression, so people don't commit suicide, so people don't, uh, you know, do other things that they ought not do. But you mentioned some key points, I think, here, uh, in the very beginning. And that is, first of all, uh, the abuse of psychiatry historically to go after dissidents. And we're seeing that more and more now, you have them saying that people who support uh, traditional marriage may have mental illness, people who, you know, as you mentioned, don't believe uh, the anthropogenic global warming theory may have mental illness, conservatives may have mental illness, traditionalists may have mental illness. Um, And, you know, this is a very slippery slope. And there's been a lot of, uh, you know, very prominent psychiatrists who have made these kinds of remarks. You can go back to, you know, Brock Chisholm of the World uh, Health Organization. He was a big advocate of this idea that you know, it's, it's a form of mental illness to cling to these, uh, you know, traditions and the founders and liberty and these types of things. So 
I, I think this opens the door to a lot of places where we do not want to go as America, even setting aside the issue of constitutionality. Why do we have a federal agency determining what our doctor is going to ask us when we come for a checkup? It, I mean, for me, that's outlandish. And again, it's a really slippery slope here, I think. Here's where I see the hook, because there's always a hook. I can't imagine that there are going to be huge numbers of people that want to go through this. But here's the way it's going to play out if you let it go. Number one, they will say, well, Mr. Leffler, uh, we think you should be screened for mental health. I mean, you do a radio show. That's, that's a risk factor right there for being mentally ill. <laughs> but we think you should do this. Now, this is voluntary, quote, quote, voluntary and not mandatory. However, if you don't do it, you won't qualify for any more payments under Obamacare. So you are voluntarily being coerced into doing that. You can see that as the very next step on this one. I don't know if you figured that out, but I sure have. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I think the tie in here with firearms is extremely important. You know, the Obama administration has been very clear that they're going to try to disarm as many Americans as possible using this uh, infamous pen and phone. And. You know, this is one very simple way of doing that. You know, a lot of people have been talking about, well, to implement this kind of mandate, you're going to need a database, right? How are you going to know if every doctor has been asking every patient the required questions to determine if they're mentally ill? So once you have this database, you're opening the door to stripping millions more Americans of their Second Amendment rights. And I think one thing that people need to understand to it, you know, when we're on this subject of psychiatry and mental illness, is that so much of this is really subjective, you know? Uh, the way that the psychiatric industry decides what an illness is, you know, it, it has very little to do with what people think of as medicine. You know, a broken bone, that, that's very simple. You take an x-ray, you see that it's broken, you already know how to fix it. You put it in a cast. When we're dealing with mental illness here, we're dealing with groups of psychiatrists coming together and deciding whether they think a certain set of what they consider to be symptoms should be classified as an illness and whether this, you know, how this illness ought to be treated. So this is really different from traditional medicine, you know, where you do a blood test and you see that uh, there's something in the blood that requires attention. This is really dealing in a very subjective realm. And we talked earlier about how there's been a lot of prominent psychiatrists in the past. And even today, we see this effort to label people who are really totally normal, who just have political beliefs that the establishment disagrees with as mentally ill. And so when once you open this door and you start saying the, the federal government can deny people their rights, their right to a firearm or anything else, based on this subjective area called psychiatry, where a psychiatrist is going to decide on these subjective indicators, whether you have this disease that was come up with, that was invented, really voted on, using uh, subjective preferences of individual psychiatrists, we are really opening kind of a Pandora's box here. And I don't see it leading anywhere good. You know, it, it's certainly true that some people suffer from uh, some kind of things in their mind. You know, there's even some people who hear voices. And these people certainly need care. They certainly need attention. And maybe they ought not be running around with firearms. You know, that's not what we're debating here. What we're talking about here, though, is I think an unprecedented expansion of federal power to meddle in the relationship between us and our doctors, along with this perpetual threat hanging over our heads of being stripped of our unalienable God-given rights if we don't answer the way that you know bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. and the psychiatric industry think we should answer. Alex Newman's my guest right now. He's a correspondent for The New American. He covers economics, education, and politics. We share the passion on uh, on educational issues. I don't know if you saw it this week. We're going for station break here, by the way. Uh, Attorney General Loretta Lynch testified this Wednesday that the Justice Department discussed taking legal civil action against the fossil fuel industry for denying the threat of carbon emissions when it comes to climate change. And they were looking at whether or not civil forfeitures or other matters could be employed in the civil area. Now, notice this. You're not thinking the way we're thinking. We have declared the debate to be closed. Any evidence notwithstanding, we're going to force you now to comply with what it is we want you to do. This is the dangerous track that we are on right now. But the real positive note is that there's more and more pushback or as people are tired of being told to shut up and want to exercise their free speech rights. When we come back from the break, as we come back with my guests, since we're talking about health care and mandated types of things, I have got to tell you what's going on in Venezuela with health care. If you want to see how well socialism performs, 
Let's take a look. We'll be back. We're at steelonsteel.com. Like us on Fabius Book. I'm John Luffler on the program. Remember to dismount. Back to you, Alex. Alex Newman, correspondent for The New American, co-author with Sam Blumenfeld of the book Crimes of the Educators, How Utopians Are Using Government Schools to Destroy America's Children. Just came out last year prior to the death of Dr. Sam Blumenfeld. We're talking about mandatory mental health screening. Right now, these are recommendations. Okay, so recommendations come and go. The two areas where I would be concerned are Number one, are they doing this in the schools to our kids or are our kids going to suddenly sit down one day and, you know, here, Susie, we're going to take this test, just answer these questions, blah, 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 at which point then the school social workers and everybody else gets involved. Or B, will this be mandatory? There's the voluntary or mandatory hook in my mind. And bear in mind that many things are voluntary nowadays that if you don't do it, carry heavy penalties. Well, that's exactly right. You know, they use the term voluntary very loosely. I mean, they, you know, they claim that our tax system is voluntary. But if anybody wants to see how voluntary it is, I encourage them to, you know, don't fill out a tax return this year and see what happens. Uh, you'll find out very quickly that their definition of voluntary is different from, say, an everyday Americans. But as for this already happening in the schools, you know, the federal government under the Obama administration has really been pushing this. And and I think it's really flown under the radar for quite some time. I've only recently started seeing articles about it. But I wrote an article a few weeks ago about this policy statement that the U.S. Department of Education and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services came up with. And actually, I wrote about it a little bit in this article on mental health screening. But what they're calling for, uh, they call parents, first of all, equal partners in child rearing. With of course, Big Brother, with the with the federal government and their agents at the state and local level, and this document, I, I think, is chilling in so many respects. It, it's filled with references to using federal grant programs to encourage, you know, is the word they use, and and promote these state and local mental health initiatives where they really want to. I mean, they're talking about home visitation programs to come visit parents and make sure they're caring properly for the children, making sure that the parents' mental health is okay. And they're also talking about doing this in schools. They said they want to ensure constant mental health monitoring of children. 